America wants innovation, substance, glamour, and who better to represent that than Mr. Luis Figo? For substance, four La Liga titles, four Serie A titles, one Champions League, and multiple other cups, and for the glamour, Ballon d'Or winner, and the original Galactico. Welcome, Louis. Thank you. Very, very pleased to be here. Thank you, Louis. Uh, you told me that Saudi Arabia was a special place for Portugal history. Well, it's true. The history of football, Portuguese football, um, under 20 uh, was righted in uh, 86 in the World Cup, under 20, when Portugal won the first title of uh, under 20. So, uh, for that generation, was was a great achievement for Portugal uh, football too, and uh, opened a lot of doors for uh, that generation. After that, we had uh, the chance to win in Lisbon in uh, the World Cup again. So, it was very important for us. Excellent. So, the first youth uh, World Cup was won in Saudi for Portugal. And we're still waiting for the first Portuguese World Cup. So, hopefully, if anyone's listening, if you want to do a World Cup in Saudi, so that we can have Portugal win it. So, what we're going to do today, we're going to talk about your career very quickly. We will talk about sports tech and what's going on in the world of sports. And if we have time, we'll take a couple of questions uh, from the audience. Unfortunately, the session was delayed, as you know, so we won't have a huge amount of time for that, but we will try. Let's speak about Sporting Lisbon, the major, major, major producers of talent. What is Portugal doing well? And what has Portugal done well to create so much talent from such a small country? Well, I think uh, it's uh, a group of uh, tools that uh, make that Portugal produce so much talent. I think we have a fantastic uh, uh, youngest competition uh, that uh, make you got a lot of experience in terms of uh, young, young uh, football. Uh, it's very competitive, you have good coaches, good facilities and I think the clubs uh, are are the difficulty to compete with another big league, so they have to uh, to form the players. Uh, that is one advantage that uh, Portugal have. So with all of that united, I think uh, makes makes the difference and makes the opportunities to to have success in that area. Excellent. It's, it's impressive the amount of talent that they do produce. Uh, and talking about young. You were a young man when you joined Barcelona, you're football advisor to UEFA now. But talk me to how is that when you're a young man moving to a new country, you have to mix with 35 new competitors in a football team. How was your time at Barcelona? Well, I think uh, I moved pretty young to Barcelona with 22 years old, uh, full of dreams. I wanted to, to follow my dream that uh, was achieved. Uh, uh, the success and the titles in Barcelona, so I, will, I try to work hard, uh, dedicate to my work, uh, devote until I, I had the chance to achieve uh, my goals. It was my first experience, so everything was new, but in the end I think uh, it was a great decision for me. And when you look at your time in Barcelona now, you obviously had to do a very controversial move at the time. How, how was that? When, you, when you're an older man now with maturity experience, looking back at someone who was so young, who took such a big decision, how, how do you look back at that now, the move from Barcelona to Real Madrid? Well, I think it was a big move, uh, important move personally, and uh, uh, in that was marking an era in, uh, in, football, in Spanish football, because after uh, 21 years, we're still talking about that, no? Yeah. It was uh, the most expensive uh, transfer in the world. Uh, a difficult decision for me, but uh, I think uh, resuming after the five years in Madrid was uh, the important decision professionally and personal. And uh, the decision was made because of recognizing 
what you give in your in your uh, career in your work so when you don't feel recognized uh, and you have the chance to move to another company another club so you always have that in mind and uh, that was happened understood and it's at your time in madrid where you won the champions league and you were the original Galactico, and then you saw a series of the biggest names in football join the club. Talk me through what it was like to be in a dressing room with Ronaldo, David Beckham, Zinedine Zidane, Roberto Carlos. H how was the atmosphere of winners and the best players in the world coming to work every day? Well, I think uh, looking the past, I think it was a unique uh, uh, moment for, for all of us because uh, we had uh, the best uh, club in the world uh, that uh, unite uh, the best football players in the moment, different kinds of uh, golden balls. Uh, we had the chance to play together, to learn from each other, and it was a great experience. I think uh, still until today we had good relations, so uh, that means that uh, the atmosphere inside of the dressing room uh, make us possible to win everything. I think uh, in football is a team sport and uh, if you don't have a good atmosphere, a good relationship, it's much more difficult to, to achieve your goals. So, uh, very pleased to be part of that uh, generation, that group and uh, I think was memorable for, for the club and for us. Absolutely, and, and nobody who saw your team will ever forget it. We could talk about football all day, but I want to move into business and technology. As a retired football player who has a lot of investments and a lot of influence everywhere, how would you, what would you say to these companies that come to a show like Leap and look for investment? What would it take for you to look at a product or look at a business and think this is something that I can think will do well? <laughs> well. If I talk like a consumer, yeah. uh, of course, I think I will, I will always look for interesting uh, uh, quality uh, development software <laughs> products. If I talk about the uh, business person, like everyone, we we're talking about uh, how to invest the best way. Uh, invest in anything, basically. So for you, you must have a lot of people come to you every day with projects. I have a business, I have this, I do, would you want to invest in this? You must have had 20, 30 years of people coming to you, right? And you have to pick the right ones. So, for example, the app you have. Talk us through the app you have, which is doing so well uh, in, in the world of tech at the moment. Well, I think uh, everyone, um, in my case, I tried to form myself when I finished football and I was trying to study in a business school. So. What I learned is not to put all the eggs in the same basket, basket no? So uh, I will always try to, to diversify. And in this case, technology uh, uh, talking, uh, we, we settle up and, uh, about uh, uh, try to, to help the youngers that don't have the chance to be scouting, no? Yeah. And uh, the app calls uh, Dream Football. It's for the, the kids that dream one time or one moment to have opportunity to, to achieve the professional level or to be seen by, by a club. So uh, it's more or less a platform that, uh, uh, like YouTube, for example, that you put your skills. And then, of course, we have the partnership with different clubs in national clubs or international clubs, and we give them the information uh, about the, the kids and they look if they if they uh, are happy and like the, the kid uh, they, they call him to try uh, 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 his chance in, in the club to train and that's it uh, after that in the in the app we, we settle different uh, uh, business models and we're very very happy to to help uh, in this case uh, the kids that have uh, a dream to be a professional, to have the opportunity to be seen by, by the clubs. So let me get this straight for the audience. If somebody has a son in the audience yeah. who wants to be big in football, they can log on to Dream Football, take yeah. a video of their son playing, upload it on the app, and you and a team of scouts yes. will analyze the performance of the player and recommend to football clubs you should have a look at this player. Correct. That's amazing. Easy. So if you heard it here first, if anyone Easy. in Saudi 
wants to get to European football, you have a Ballon d'Or winner who will look at the videos of your children and make recommendations. So, uh, and green we had, football. We had some success cases of uh, young kids that uh, did that and uh, uh, they had the chance and they are right now playing in some, some clubs. So uh, it's a model that works uh, and the technology helps in this case to, uh, to these kids to have the opportunity to follow the, their dreams. No? Amazing. Dream football, everyone. Have a look at it. We've entered into technology now, and I want to talk about technology in sports. Dream football did not exist when you started playing football. There was no really video filming, no, not technology at the scale. How have you seen the evolution of technology, especially in football, in your career to today? Well, I, I stopped playing football in 2009, so I played for 20 years, more or less, and uh, of course, there's been, uh, it's been uh, some important changes uh, in terms of technology in, in, in football. Uh, I, I have idea that in football, you can't, you can't lose the sense of what is football. Uh, because I, I start f play football in the street, not in academies, and I didn't like to see football being changing what is the sense, no? I think, uh, uh, of course, the desire of, uh, uh, to predict what happened yeah. in the future is part of the, the human nature, but um, I think technology shows how innovative tools can, can improve the game. Uh, technology will not decide winners or, or losers but uh, makes the game uh, fairer, no? So I think some changes is, is being done in terms of uh, technology, including in football, like uh, goal line technology yeah. that when I play was not existing. Uh, the electronic performance and tracking systems, uh, the VR. Uh, so these kind of situations can make the, the football more fair, but not deciding who wins who win, or lose. lose. So it's important changes uh, through these years and uh, I hope that we follow the, the technology that we have uh, to the good of sport. Excellent. You touched on something which is making a lot of noise at the moment, which is VAR. You've been a player, you're an advisor to UEFA. How do you feel about VAR and how it's being used in world football today? Well, I think I think is an important tool that helps uh, to decide well, but uh, I think should be uh, communicate, inform uh, not only the people that is inside of football, but outside the fans too, because you have to have a concept, a, co a correct concept that what is VR uh, is very difficult when you watch football and uh, you see a decision or a penalty sign or a, or a decision by the referee that you don't understand because you're not educated on the laws. How is the real uh, rule of the game, no? the laws of the game. So I think it's very important to have that concept. Uh, all the industry of football use the technology and explain really what is and why is like this. Because sometimes I, I see some decisions that uh, I play football and, and I think, What's why? Why and uh, what happened? No? So I think it's very, very important, the education. Of course, the VR is very important because it makes more, more fair the, the results. But in the way that everyone is in the same line and everyone understands the decisions of, the, in this case, the, the referees. Referee. So, as a fan, I want to ask you something. I'm a fan watching at home or in the stadium. Explain to me why we cannot hear the referee speaking to VAR. Because for me, it fixes your problem. We need to understand why. The only people that can explain to me why this decision has been taken is the VAR and the referee who took this decision. Why do we not have that at the moment in football? Do you think it's to protect the referee? Well, I think, I think it's, a, it's a step that could be made in the future, but uh, maybe uh, right now is a conversation that uh, 
must be settled between the referee and uh, the VR uh, uh, box in this case, and maybe it's to protect, of course, uh, the decision of the referee because sometimes, like I said before, I think is is the intuition of of the referee the decision, and uh, must be very strict in my opinion. The decision is like black and white in the terms of uh, uh, what happened in the box, no? So uh, maybe the next step will happen because it's recently the VR and there's a lot of things that should be improved. Should be improved. Uh, goal line technology. Do you think that's going on well? The ball that hits the line, we saw in 2010, I think, in the World Cup, Frank Lampard. And I think that's where FIFA started changing the idea. For me, it's probably the best example of a technology which has worked in sports. Do you think there's, there's anything controversial about it or all is good with it? No, I think it's easy because <laughs> the goal, goal line technology shows you really if the ball is inside or outside. So in that case, there's not so many doubts in terms of the decision. Okay. I want to talk a bit about analytics. We, talk, we talked about scouting, which is your, uh, obviously your, your app, Dream Football. We are at a stage now with your app, um, companies like Wisecout, where there's so much data about mm -hmm. football. If you have an account, you can log on, you can see the amount of runs made, the amount of passes made, everything. Do you think we're getting to the stage where that form of augmented reality will replace the work of a scout? So you will just have that data, and people will look at the data, and will stop looking at the player. Well, I think the data has been... Uh... Uh, in the last years, what is, was growing more in terms of uh, clubs and federations. Uh, of course, it's important uh, to have uh, the value of the data, not only in football, but for all the tech com uh, uh, companies are the biggest, uh, one of the biggest values in, 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 the, in the world, I think. And in football, I think, is. Uh, it helps in terms of performance, in terms of training, uh, but I don't think we'll move or change in this term in terms of personnel to be used only data. You need the people uh, to certify all the all the data uh, to be used in improvement of the training, the performance, uh, the other teams, yeah. uh, the scouting. So I think it's there. Uh, we'll be growing more in the future, I think. It will be a big value for the clubs and the football associations. Interesting. Okay. Let's talk about... We know that technology is always evolving. So when you started playing football to when you retired, a lot of changes have happened. What do you look at in football today and say, I wish we had that technology back then? We see players recover from injuries quicker. We see analysis to prepare, to prepare teams on the next teams. So we see a lot of technology being involved. What do you think was a big switch that you wish you played during that time? Did you have injuries, for example, that, that lasted long? Well, I think, I think all, the, all the news that I was talking before uh, in terms of data, training session, equipments, uh, balls, boots, have been improved so much in this uh, last decade uh, that make... Uh, for sure now the, 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 the players and the staff and the clubs and the people involved in this industry uh, have more control of their individual uh, performance and players' data. So uh, now, it didn't happen in my time, everyone after a, a game knows how many assists, how many yep. passes, how many wrong decisions I made. Uh, so that, I think, will help the player if you are interested in, in, in grow and to be better in the next game, to try to improve or to try to train uh, that situation better to, uh, to be better. So this is the example of the technology in football that I didn't have in my time. In your no? And uh, you, could, you could see now uh, that exists and can help you to perform much better every day. Okay, very interesting. Guys, we're going to ask one more question, and I think we have time for, for probably two from the audience. If anyone has a question, you can ask uh, Basma. Last question, uh, Luis. When you look back at your career, 
what hits you? What is your highlight? What are the one, two, three best memories you have? Well, I think uh, I think all the passion that I had for my for my 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 job, my work, the football, make me to achieve uh, so many things that I couldn't believe when I start to play football. No, I like to train. I like to compete. I like to every day be better. And of course, if I had uh, uh, more data, more technology, maybe I could be better in that in that time, no? in that period. So. Uh, I just uh, want to thankful to all the companies that work in uh, in uh, in this case in to help football to to improve to to help the players to to be better uh, and uh, for sure more news and uh, will come in the future to make uh, uh, this sport more bigger and bigger. Inshallah, I think in terms of a career. There's very few players that could rival you, so I think you've, you've done very well. We'll take one question, I think, from the audience. If anyone has a question, now is the time to ask. Otherwise, we will move on. I think the gentleman in front. We've got uh, five minutes. Move. An easy one, please. Uh, <laughs> yes, it's easy. Uh, as a Barcelona fan, I want to ask you, what's your feeling uh, for the first time coming to Camp Nou after uh, uh, moving to Madrid? I didn't understand. No. I think, can you come closer because we didn't hear you. As a Barcelona fan, I want to ask, uh, what's your feeling uh, first time you come to Camp Nou as a Real Madrid player? You understood? Ah, I understood, yes. I understood. You are a Barcelona fan. I think you should pretend you didn't understand and we move on to another question. Uh, well, for me, it was, uh, was a comeback to a, a house that I, I knew so well for five years. Uh, the atmosphere was not uh, so friendly, but uh, I was just trying to focus on do my, my work, uh, do what uh, my coach was, was trying, was told me before the game. So uh, I was trying to be fo focused on, on, my, on my game, but unfortunately, uh, the result was not positive for us and that was the, the worst. But uh, I think it was a great individual experience for me that uh, helped me in the future of my career. Thank you for your question. Luis, thank you so much for your time. Thanks. Thank you for coming to Saudi. It's a pleasure to be in Saudi. And Thanks for, uh, for everyone who will be here. Thank you all.